So I'm from the Carnegie Institution of Science in California, and my lab is interested in understanding how plants evolve their metabolic systems. So as you all know, plants uh, have to deal with all of their environmental challenges standing still. So they've invented some innovative um, strategies chemically uh, to, do, to deal with these environments. And in fact, flowering plants alone can synthesize hundreds of thousands of compounds to deal with their environments. So we're interested to understand, uh, in understanding how um, these metabolic pathways are formed and diversified in plants. So this is just a, a review of uh, the components that I'll be talking about. So pathway is a transformation of chemicals uh, through reactions that are catalyzed by enzymes that are encoded by genes. So um, we want to understand what the molecular mechanisms that drove this chemical diversity in plants uh, are. And to do that, we've um, developed a computational pipeline to predict metabolic complements such as enzymes, reactions, and pathways, and categorize them into 13 domains of metabolism and compare them across 17 plant species. Some of this work has been published recently, but today I'm going to um, talk to you about some of the recent findings that haven't been published yet. And these have to do with uh, divergence patterns of metabolic pathways in terms of reaction gains and losses, duplication patterns of metabolic genes, and um, co-location of metabolic genes in, in chromosomes, in plant genomes. So in the last few years, we've developed a computational pipeline to predict um, these metabolic complements uh, that are high quality and, and to do this in a fast way. Uh, unfortunately, I won't have time to go through the details of the pipeline, but we've used um, components that are already available and also uh, created some novel components um, that leverage the years of experience that we have in curating uh, metabolic information from the literature. So the, what the pipeline does is takes a set of protein sequences from sequence genomes and then outputs a metabolic network for construction. And the components that we've built are available online. So using this pipeline, we've generated metabolic reactions and pathways for 17 species, including an alga, Chlamydomonas, moss, Viscumitrella, Peyton's Selaginella, which is a vascular plant, seven uh, species of grasses, and seven species of eudicots. And we've identified thousands of enzymes, reactions, and um, compounds, as well as hundreds of pathways from each of these genomes, and all of the data are available online for searching, browsing, and downloading, and hopefully exploring by you guys. Um, we've categorized these reactions and pathways into 13 domains of metabolism. Specialized takes a big chunk. This is commonly known as secondary metabolism, but the plant metabolic community has adopted the phrase specialized metabolism, so that's what I'm going to be using today. And then 12 domains of primary metabolism, things like carbohydrates, um, amino acids, fatty acids, and things like that. So one of the first questions we asked uh, was how conserved are these metabolic pathways in flowering plants? So we define a conserved pathway as follows. So a pathway um, that has the reactions um, annotated with the enzymes, the same reactions annotated with the enzymes between two species, we call them conserved. If a pathway has different reactions that are annotated with enzymes between the two species, we call them diverged. So what do you think would be the proportion of conserved and diverged pathways in flowering plants would be? So we found about 60% of the pathways that are found in at least two angiosperm species to be conserved in all of their reaction annotations, whereas about 40% were diverged. And so when we ask which uh, metabolic domains um, are enriched in these diverged pathways, not too surprisingly, we found specialized metabolism and hormone metabolism to be strongly enriched in um, diverged pathways. On the other hand, uh, many of the domains in primary metabolism were uh, enriched in conserved pathways. So we looked a little deeper into the diverged pathways. Did the pathways diverge through reaction gains and losses? Is a question that we asked. So to answer this question, we um, took the presence and absence of enzymes that catalyze reactions, and then using a maximal likelihood methods, inferred the reaction gain and loss events <coughs> along the lineage. There are a lot of different ways of analyzing this data, but one simple way that we did this is to simply sum up the, all of the um, reaction gain and loss events in the lineage. And we found a couple of patterns. One is that most of these reaction gains and losses occurred most 
fairly, uh, fairly recently in the lineage. And to my surprise, there were as many um, reaction loss events as there were gain events. I was surprised by this because I kind of consider metabolic invention or innovation to be due, mostly due to gains of reactions and pathways. But it appears that there's a lot of dynamic sort of um, stuff happening with metabolic networks in terms of losing pathways too. Um, so, you know, this kind of data could be really interesting to answer a lot of interesting evolutionary questions, but it could also be quite interesting in terms of engineering adaptive traits. So I'm going to give you just one example. This is a, a pathway that's gained uh, the last two reactions in the grasses. It's a pathway that makes these compounds called mugenates. And mugenates are these compounds that can chelate the insoluble ferric iron from the soil. So iron is you know, the most uh, limiting micronutrient uh, for the plants in the world. And it's not limiting because there isn't a lot of iron around. It's limiting because the iron that's around in the soil is insoluble in ferric form. But grasses have actually come up with this really cool way of making a compound that can actually chelate that ferric iron and bring it into the plants. What was surprising to us is that when we looked at the divergence pattern of this pathway, that all the, four, the first four steps of this pathway are actually conserved in the eudicots, things like soybean and cassava. And so all you have to do is probably just engineer the penultimate step, or maybe the last two steps, to maybe um, you know, make these plants more tolerant to low iron conditions. And so this is just one example of a diverse pathway of over 100 pathways that we found, most of, the, most of which are likely to be adaptive. So it provides an interesting sort of way of targeting um, adaptive traits into plants using metabolic engineering and synthetic biology perhaps. But let's go get back to the reaction gain event. So what kinds of mechanisms could lead to gains of reactions? So you know, typically, um, gene functions um, are gained by gene duplications. And in plants, there are two main ways of duplicating genes. Local duplication, also called tandem duplication, <laughs> due to um, unequal crossing over, and also whole genome duplication. So we asked which types of duplications led to um, the metabolic uh, gene diversity. We first looked at aromidopsis, and so we looked at the metabolic genes, um, the their tendencies to either duplicate by tandem duplication on the y-axis or whole genome duplication on the uh, x-axis. This is fold enrichment compared to all of the metabolic genes. And we grouped them into, the, of the, in, into those uh, metabolic domains I told you about. And we found that specialized metabolism is significantly enriched in tandemly duplicated genes, as were detoxification and redox genes. Whereas um, inorganic nutrients and nucleotides were significantly enriched in whole genome duplicated genes. And so we asked whether this pattern was um, common across all the plants. And so uh, quite an interesting pattern. First, yes, we found that across the um, 17 species we looked at, um, specialized metabolic genes were enriched in tandemly duplicated genes throughout. In addition, we found other domains of primary metabolism that were also heavily enriched in specialized metabolic, uh, sorry, heavily enriched in tandemly duplicated genes. And these were inorganic nutrients, detoxification, hormones, and redox. So I, so I think that maybe some of these primary metabolic domains could also represent um, adaptive sort of um, traits that are quite different from other sort of more conserved domains of primary metabolism. And this deviates from how people typically think of metabolism and separating them into primary and secondary. Um, the last thing that I want to tell you about in terms of potential mechanisms of forming and diversifying metabolic pathways in plants is this interesting phenomenon that's been discovered in the last 10 years. And this is this operon-like gene clusters of metabolic genes that can synthesize specialized compounds. And over the last 15 years or so, there's been about 20 of these gene clusters that have been found in plants. It's very unusual, and in, in the beginning, people didn't really believe it. But now we have the data set to ask how widespread this phenomenon is. And we did exactly that and found, to our surprise, thousands of these metabolic gene clusters. These are just a handful of the examples, oh, sorry, shown um, uh, as the, the, color, the color bars represent genes that catalyze different uh, enzyme functions. And uh, across the 16 species, we found over 6,000 of these metabolic gene clusters that are more um, frequently occurring than expected by chance, given the number of metabolic genes in the genome. And this is another way of looking at it. If we ask how many of the clusters of different sizes, here size of a cluster means number of genes found in a cluster, 
Across these species, we find many of them of many sizes. So whether these metabolic gene clusters represent uh, novel metabolic pathways is an open question. But one thing we did ask was whether any of these um, metabolic gene clusters are enriched in particular domains of metabolism. And similar to the tandemly duplicated genes, we found specialized metabolism genes to be heavily enriched in these uh, gene clusters, as, as were the inorganics, uh, nutrient assimilation genes, these to detoxification hormones and redox. Although the pattern of enrichment for these gene clusters uh, is more lineage specific than the tandemly duplicated genes, still so shows an interesting pattern. So one thing that we could ask whether, uh, you know, whether these metabolic genes could actually be real pathways is to ask whether they are co-expressed. Um, so we looked at the co-expression of known specialized metabolic genes, and this is on the x-axis, the co-expression level, and the known specialized metabolic genes within the same pathway are very highly co-expressed compared to the randomly selected cluster genes. But we found the gene clusters that are enriched in the specialized metabolic genes are also actually quite co-expressed much different from the random clusters, although it, it's not as highly co-expressed as the known specialized metabolic genes. And so it remains to be seen uh, how many of these you know, uh, metabolic path clusters are real pathways and what the origin and um, function of these clusters are. So in summary, I've told you that we've developed a computational pipeline to generate these metabolic complements uh, from any sequence plant genome actually can be applied, the pipeline can be applied to non-plant genomes as well. And we've, we've compared these pathways across the species and found some patterns of uh, mechanisms that might explain how metabolic pathways uh, might have evolved. And there's a lot more interesting questions uh, we can ask, particularly, particularly in light of evolution. And so uh, we're, we're excited to actually go deeper into these questions. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the people that did the work. So this project was carried out by um, uh, uh, several uh, talented postdocs and curators, half of whom now have their own independent positions, and other members of the lab and key collaborators, and the project was funded by NSF and DOE. So we looked at, <clears throat> there are four types of topologies and pathways, simple, linear, branch, uh, circular, and kind of gritty. Um, and we, the circular and gritty ones are difficult to sort of analyze. So we looked at simple, uh, the linear and the branched ones. And the divergence actually for biosynthetic pathways happens at the end. And the divergence of reactions for degradation pathways happen in the beginning. Um, but there are other sort of divergent pathways that happen like, you know, patchy, like, you know, in the pathways. It looks like the gain events actually, they're both, both of the gain and loss events happen at both ends, but there are more gains than losses. 